Good afternoon. I hope this video finds you well. I'm coming to talk to you a little bit about anxiety. Um, as you know, if you're in my Facebook group, I asked a question about how anxiety shows up for you and I got quite a large number of responses, different responses from different people about how their anxiety shows up for them. And I spoke a little bit about how it used to show up for me. Uh, so I'm just going to try and see if I can reflect on that now. So one of the things was, and, and this is someone, I was someone who didn't know that they had anxiety at all. I just knew that um, I was, I would have called it very, very stressed. I knew that I had post-traumatic stress disorder, but I wouldn't have said what I had was anxiety until I really understood that that's what I was doing for myself. But that came from an insight that I had. So the way it showed up for me was um, people would always say, um, let me just make sure this is turned out, that I was a control freak <laughs> uh, and that I was bossy. So I had to have everything in, in, in my way. So I would always have to have things, you know, um, I'd have to have the same knife and fork, the same mug. I would always cut things out of my clothes, like little labels out of my clothes. Um, I had to get up at a certain time, I had to eat at a certain time, my son had to eat at a certain time. Everything was kind of very, very structured and very, very rigid. And if anything kind of deviated from that, it caused me to almost hyperventilate. So if someone, if I saw someone not washing up properly, for example, in my mind, if they weren't washing up properly, I would... Um, get angry and take the play and, and wash it up myself because the way I did it was the right way to do it. And that kind of manifested through through quite a lot of areas in my life. One of the things, you know, because like, I had this conversation with a client this week and that's what kind of prompted me to ask the question. She said, you know, I'm, I get very stressed when I get emails and, and I don't want to open them. And that was something that, that, that reminded me that that's what used to happen to me. I'd, I'd get an email and um, I'd have a lot of thinking about this email and then I would be frightened actually to open my emails or I might respond to an email in a kind of stressful way and then I'd be absolutely petrified about opening my emails again and I'd put it off and put it off because I would have a lot of thinking about that. So it would cause me to experience anxiety in the moment that I was thinking about opening the email and so what I want to kind of point you to is the, that we experience always a hundred percent of the time we experience what we're thinking moment to moment to moment and we have a very wonderful incredible brain that wants to keep us safe quote unquote safe so it's coming from like a survival instinct now if we think, so some of us might have anxiety, some of us might have depression, some of us, um, you know, we'll, we'll all have a kind of particular flavour of how stressful thinking manifests in the body. So for me, it was anxiety and um, kind of controlling and a lot of sad thinking I had I had a tendency to to sort of live in the past play out past things and I'd get very very sad so I, I, I would kind of live my life um, you know being all bubbly and everything like that for for my job for the work that I did I used to run um, boot camps and be a personal trainer in Cambridge so I'd be all like happy and and I'd get great you know great energy from that and then I'd come away from that and feel feel you know just very low very sad and one of the other things for me was anger I used to get very angry with people and very angry especially if I'd had alcohol which was one of my um, the way I kind of cope to manage my anxiety so what I want you to know is that like we're always feeling the content of our thinking moment by moment by moment and as I was saying your your brain is a machine brain that wants to keep you safe, that, that has your survival at it as its priority, but not your happiness. So a lot of us confuse that and misidentify 
with our thinking. So if I were to ask you the question, do you know that you're not your thoughts? How would you answer that question? Because if I'd known for the sort of, well, my whole life really, apart from when I was very little, you know, where I had freedom, where I explored, where I had confidence, where I was, you know, um, I didn't have the level of, of heavy thinking that I started to have, which started for me around about six, seven, that kind of age. I started to take on um, opinions about what other people think, what I thought other people thought. So we kind of create this story about who we think we are and we really identify with our thoughts and that's a misidentification. Because if I knew that I wasn't my thoughts, it probably would have saved me quite a lot of heartache over the years and a lot of anxiety. And essentially, if you, if you have the experience of, you know, one day an email can make you feel very stressed and another day the same email, you might have no thinking about it. Like, what would be the difference, do you think? Because it's not always consistent that we experience the same thing. So if there's someone that annoys you, say for example your partner, some days your partner um, could do something and you wouldn't be affected by it, and other days your partner could do the same thing and you, you know, you might wanna, you know, you might feel like you're really, really angry. And it's the same with children. You know, one day your children could be throwing food around, you know, and having a food fight and you'd be joining in, and another day, they'd be throwing food and you could be like, ah, oh, this is, you know, like thinking about the stress and the clean up and just really in your head. So the difference is not the circumstances or the people, it's your thinking in the moment about them. So what I want you to just take on board for the purpose of this kind of little vlog is that your feelings are a direct consequence of your thought in the moment. And if you're feeling low, that's a clue, it's like a little gift, that you are paying attention to thoughts which are gonna just take you down that rabbit hole and that you don't have to pay attention to those thoughts. And this is something that we're not taught as adults, um, or children, actually I should say, although there's lots of work being done in schools around this understanding and prisons and mental health um, places and it's you know it's kind of slowly f filtering out into the world is that we experience our thinking we don't experience circumstances we don't experience people we experience our thinking about the circumstances and the people which means no one ever and no thing has any power to make you feel any way and our anxiety that's created that we kind of feel that physical manifestation of our thinking is often when we're predicting a future scenario in our mind. We're kind of playing out a movie of what we think is going to happen in the future uh, based around something, whatever that might be. And very often it's like we're playing out the worst case scenario in our minds. Um, and I bet you, if you really think about this, when you've been anxious about something in the past, what's actually happened has been far, far, far removed from what you thought it was going to be. And it's never as bad as you think, is, is what people say. So I just want to leave you with that today. It's, it's us trying to figure out ourselves with our intellect. And we go over and over and over and over the same things and we go into our intellect to try and figure it out or trying to kind of resolve past traumas or, you know, it's, it's us believing that if we do that enough, they'll look different to us. But in my experience, after years and years and years of therapy and counselling and doing it myself, I said I often used to feel worse. So it's seen that the more we go into our story of anxiety or sadness or grief or fear, the more we talk about it, the worse we feel. And that's what I want to offer you hope because there's hope in that. There's hope in this understanding and there's freedom. There's freedom for, for you because 
I've certainly found it, um, and I know lots of other people have. Anyway, I want to leave you with that today, because I probably, I don't know how long I've been talking, but anyway, uh, if you have any questions, uh, or you want me to explore this more with you, just let me know, and I'll talk to you very soon. Take care.